Hello everybody, it's Dana from the channel Gemstone Stitches and if you're interested I also have an Instagram account. It's also named Gemstone Stitches. I do post there occasionally and sometimes put a few additional items on there that I think the cross stitching community might find interesting. So again that's Gemstone Stitches. I am back to do a long overdue update. I don't even remember what month it was when I did my last update. I think it's been oh a few months or so. Um, but we have moved. We did move across the country from Nebraska. <coughs> Sorry. Bear. Teddy. That's enough. No barking, please. Sorry. Um, we have a couple chihuahuas in the house. Uh, and there's some guys outside working on the siding of my in-law's house right now. And, of course, in true chihuahua fashion, they are barking <laughs> at anything. So, hopefully that doesn't keep happening during this video but anyway I was saying we just moved um, across the country from Nebraska to Vermont and we're currently staying at my in-laws house um, my husband's dad's house and his stepmom's house and then occasionally every other weekend or so we go to his mother's house and spend the night there a few nights Shh, it's enough and um, so yeah, it's been, we moved about mid-October, so it's been about a couple months now. The sale of our house in Nebraska went great. We sold it ourselves, and we sold it to the second person who looked. Uh, I mean, it was barely on Zillow. We didn't even get a sign out in the yard that said for sale by owner, and it was sold. So everything, timeline-wise, worked out really well for my husband to get here in Vermont for, this, for the job and I didn't have to stay back in Nebraska to try and sell a house or anything. We all got to come together. Well, I flew with our son and my husband drove everything out. <laughs> uh, so, bravo to him. Because he also, not only did he drive a huge truck full of stuff, but he towed his car behind it. So, I was pretty impressed and I was happy that he made it here safely. I'm not sure how well the buying of a house in Vermont is going to work out. Um, there's not too too much out there for, uh, that we enjoy or we like. Um, so I'm hoping more stuff might come out on the market after the new year and the, the holidays are over with. People will decide they need to sell their house or want to do that after the holidays are over. Because we kind of have a timeline and this is the big announcement that I was hinting at in uh, the title of the video. We are actually expecting another baby. I am pregnant right now, uh, 20 weeks along. So I was pregnant, very, very early on pregnant in my last video. Was still feeling fine. Didn't even feel like I was pregnant yet during that video. And shortly after that, I started to have all the first trimester symptoms of feeling pretty ill and very tired. So my stitching bug went away. I didn't have a desire to do much of anything besides the bare minimum of what I need to do and trying to move a house and help as much as I can with that. Um, so it was kind of bad timing as far as moving goes because I was pretty much ill and tired the whole time we were packing. But I'm happy to say that I'm now out of the first trimester and well into the second trimester and uh, feeling really, really good. We did find out that it's going to be a baby girl. So we have our son, Ethan, who's two and a half, and now we'll have this little baby girl. So we're really, really excited. We have a little bit of a timeline to try to get into a house because I'm due May 1st and uh, it's mid-December right now. So I basically want to have a house purchased in the next three to three and a half months at the latest. 
So please keep your fingers crossed for us. I definitely want to be in a house and try to get a couple things situated for for the kids mostly. Um, get you know the bedroom for Ethan done and get ready to bring a baby in to the home. Ah, so we haven't picked out a name yet or anything. Um, we're just kind of sitting in that sweet spot of the second trimester, feeling good. Nothing is extremely pressing quite yet, but I'm sure in a month or two, I'm going to feel the pressure to get, <laughs> get a name picked out and get everything, you know, ready for this baby. So on to the stitching. Once my stitching bug came back, I worked solely on the winter garden by the drawn thread. And um, that's because I had a goal of getting that completed by winter time. And I was able to do that. I did finish it. And here is a shot of it. It's kind of a wide project. So I'm going to have to do this kind of in parts. But um, so. Um, it's finished, but it's not washed or ironed or anything. So you have um, all the different plants there. Uh, dogwood, juniper, poinsettia, conifer. Um, there's ivy on the, on the house there. So that's the first half of it. And then go on to the second half here. Um, so we have okay, sorry. Let me just get myself oriented here. And so then there's uh, heath, cedar. Hellebore, or Hellebone, I'm not sure, pine and holly. So, there you have the other half of it. And this is done on 32 count um, twilight blue. I think, and it's a linen, I believe. I bought it at my local needlework shop that was in Nebraska. But uh, I loved working on this project. Um, I, I just absolutely loved it because there's so much um, different different things in in here. There's not just cross stitching. There's you know back stitching for all the branches, and then there's a ton of specialty stitches. All the snowflakes are specialty stitches. Um, the poinsettias are on the little vases holding the poinsettias. The green and the red are specialty stitches. Um, on the conifer tree, there's, I don't think it's considered a specialty stitch, but it's more like, I guess, back stitching rather than just cross stitching. And then, um, you know, the birds, the little uh, cardinals are so cute. And then, you can see me right through the fabric. <laughs> um, get on over here. Um, there's more cute little birds there. And then more specialty stitches in the vases. The, the pattern was great. Um, as far as the special, specialty stitches go. Because they have a diagram for each one. So it really, really helped to completely detail what you need to do, especially when, if you're like me, you don't know how to do specialty stitches. Uh, so, you know, if anyone's concerned about doing something like that, I would say go ahead because in my experience, anytime there's a specialty stitch, 
the the pattern usually tells you exactly how to do it or else you could probably YouTube a video and someone's um, showing you how to do it on a YouTube video uh, I did not use all of the called for threads on this um, the there's needlepoint ink and dinky dies and I think maybe one or two of the seasons of these patterns have maybe some other type of threads and any of the needlepoint ink threads which is most of them I most of each pattern is needlepoint ink and then there's about four or five dinky dies in there um, but any of the needlepoint ink threads I converted to a DMC because I wanted to save a little bit on cost but I kept the dinky dies the same because I felt like there was more of a variegation in that in those threads so I enjoyed going back and forth between DMC and the dinky dies um, I love the patterns all these seasons with all the plants and then the big house in the center the architecture loved it I will say that this was a little bit green and white heavy <laughs> particularly in the house you know that got a little bit um, tiresome stitching all that white and green and, and the snow there's like little snow white snow and all these plants all over the place um, and then I forgot the pine tree that was really fun to stitch I can't I don't know if you can see but just the they're just like lines going down I mean just the effect that it has is so cool because it really does look like a sprig of pine or something like that so that's done it's not gonna be fully finished because I don't really have anywhere to hang it uh, so it will just kind of hang out until I'm ready to do that I will start the spring garden that's what it looks like. It has a yellow house in there and lots of beautiful plants. It looks like there's some more colors in this one. Um, it's all very, it's not too brightly colored in any of these patterns, but of course spring is going to have a few more pastels. There's, I see purples and blues and yellows and pinks in there. And there's little bees. So I'm, I'm looking forward to starting that project. Actually, I did start it during Stitch Mania, but all I got done was a few of those words, a couple of those words. And other than that, it is uh, not, not, not gone anywhere since Stitch Mania. So I'll begin that one probably after the new year at some point. So since finishing the winter garden, I have been working on um, this Dimensions Gold collection um, stocking called uh, Candy Cane Santa. Uh, this is a stocking that I'm doing for my husband. He chose it out, he picked it out. So there it is. And I started in the center, which was like down here in the gray part of his beard. Uh, during stitch mania and I got one color done that day that one day and then I think I pulled it out another time sorry the Sun is peeking in every once in a while but I pulled it out one or two days and I think I got a few more colors done but not too too much had been accomplished on that and I have worked on this for the past couple weeks and I'm happy to say that Santa's face is pretty much finished, his, his face and his beard. And then that is, um, you know, the, that's the fur on his hat and the little ball on his hat down there. And this is the window pane because he's looking through a window. So that's the start of the window pane. I think I had some ivory up here and some leftover threads so I just used up the rest of the thread to do that part of the window pane so the next thing that I'm gonna do is start 
working around around just surrounding Santa so um, I'm just gonna keep pecking along at the different colors you know get into the the window pane and then um, you know there's some ribbon and get into his hat oh and then there's the holly there incorporate some of these reds I love it I think it's turning out really really nicely um, there's a ton of colors in there and not only are there a ton of colors but there are um, blends so I would say at least a quarter of the colors used so far are blends and I'm not a big fan I mean I like the effect but I I don't like getting out threads you know like oh I ran out of thread I need to you know re-thread my needle and pull out more thread um, I mean it's not like it's that big of a deal but it's just one of those things that like oh you know I gotta stop I want to keep going and not only do you have to get one thread out but you have to get two threads out and um, it tends to tangle more when I have it like that uh, so anyway I'm, I, I'm not the biggest fan of stitching with the blends and getting the blends out but I do like the effect because it looks very oh human like or I don't know see if that woke up my child there's a big bang <laughs> from the people working on the siding and I wonder if that woke him up but it looks like he's still sleeping um human like what is the word I'm looking for I don't know I can't think of the word but I just remember I was doing the beard and then finally I was getting to do this the peaches and the pink tones of the skin and one day I came back in the room after being not looking at the project for a few hours and I was like whoa that looks so great so I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot um, it's a little bit slow going but I'm, I'm enjoying it and it is I found that figured it, it is full coverage and I am uh, a part of the full coverage fanatic face group Facebook group uh, that's put together by Ann P um, is that little birdhouse stitches or little bird stitches oh, I don't remember her channel name but she put together the Facebook group full coverage fanatics and there's challenges I think on there where you have to stitch 1200 stitches a month um, each month and I think that begins on January 1st I don't know I need to get back on there and see what the guidelines are so I'm participating correctly but since joining the group I've found out that I'm pregnant and so I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to do that <laughs> the whole year maybe until the baby's due like you know January through April I can maybe I can manage but once the baby's here I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to get 1200 stitches a month but I can put um, the Santa in as part of that challenge and then I can also continue to do my heaven and earth design um, peacock days I have one page completed on that so I will most likely try to do peacock days every month but maybe in the month of January I'll work on the stocking continue working on the stocking just because I do want to get that done by next Christmas so I I do intend to keep uh, plugging away at it so I want to I kind of want to see some progress on both projects so those will be my main projects along with the spring garden by the drawn thread um, when the new year begins let me get a sip of my tea here Um, so today's the 14th, I think, 14th of December, and on the 20th, we are leaving to go to Texas, um, to see my family for Christmas, and so, um, for that, I am going to bring along 
a couple mill hill kits. It's a couple mill hill ornaments. Um, that's a blue green type ornament, like a jewel ornament. And then I also have this um, chalkboard one that has mostly just grays and whites with a little bit of red and green in there with this cute little jewel hanging down. But I thought, you know, these kits come with everything you need in it and they're very small. So if I have any time at all while I'm in Texas or during the traveling, um, I could work on those. I've been having a lot of fun stitching on winter related and holiday related projects. So I'll continue that until we get into the new year. Although I, I am going to keep stitching on Santa Claus here, the stocking, after the new year. But those are my plans. <sighs> what else can I say? Oh, I did want to mention that I have gained a lot of enthusiasm towards my stockings. Um, I had a lot to begin with, but I've really enjoyed seeing a couple other floss tubers uh, show their stockings. Belinda, Aussie Stitcher, I believe it is. She stitches the Dimensions gold stockings uh, for all of her children, and I believe she's even already stitched uh, Can and Cane Santa. That I saw a picture on Instagram where she had her finished stockings hung up, and one of them was that one. So that was really fun. I thought, oh, she can do it, I can do it. And they're all beautiful great stitching. And then also um, Nell at Little Yellow House Crafts or Needleworks, um, she's stitching stockings for all of her kids. And I don't know if she's stitched for herself and her husband or not, but um, she's doing really good as well on Target, especially because I think she's expecting her third child and she's already stitching that third child. Uh, stocking that's in her belly and I haven't even I pick I picked out the stocking I want to do for this baby in here but I won't even have that started until I finish this stocking so I'm a little behind but they're giving me a lot of enthusiasm to keep on trucking and get them completed and I also have to say I really love the way that Nell finishes her stockings with the quilted background um, I ran across her videos uh, after I had just finished Ethan's stocking and I used all the kit, everything that came with the kit to finish it and then I saw her videos and saw what she did to finish and thought, well dang, I should have done that. So from here on out, I definitely am going to finish them with better backing and um, like she said, you put all this effort and work into this stocking and then it's just kind of this thin felt for the back and rather than doing that I want to make it really special. So I definitely am going to do that for the for future stockings. Um, and I may even rip out Ethan's stocking and redo it with a nicer backing. I don't know yet because I'm not very uh, very great at doing that sewing I already had some co-workers help me finish it off fully finish that stocking so ripping it out and redoing it yeah I don't I don't know how to do that but I am sure I can find someone to help me with that or possibly figure it out for myself and then the other person I've really been enjoying is Tina with Simply and Stitches she's doing a vlogmas where she has a video every single day until Christmas time of, for the month of December and um, yeah every morning I wake up and there's a video there and it's a it's a short video so I kind of just wake up and watch the video and then start doing what I need to do for the day and it's just really fun Christmas music I enjoy seeing all the different crafts that she does and um, just her little Christmas decorations and things that she cooks. It's just really interesting to see 
you really get a peek into her life and she's just fun to watch for me. So I did want to mention that since I have been enjoying that daily and she's putting in a lot of effort to those videos. But uh, I just want to wish everybody, um, wish everyone well. If you celebrate the holidays, um, then Merry Christmas to you and your family and happy stitching.